Hello and welcome back to No Limit Drag Racing 2.0 with, of course, the latest update. Now, in this video, we're going to be focusing on the R34 Skyline. However, obviously, there are a bunch more cars in this update that if you're not aware of those, you should go and check out my update overview video over on the channel. Also, the tune I am using in this video was loosely based on another tune that will be linked in the description box down below. Although I've been kind of messing around with it and tweaking it a little bit just to see if I can make it suit kind of how I want it to drive just a little bit more. So if you would like to use the same starting point that I did, the link to the original tune will be in the description down below. So a couple of things to go over with this car. Um, I know a lot of people are probably going to, I guess the best way I can say it is probably overuse this car, especially while it's brand new. Now, while this car is brand new, I have a feeling that a lot of people are probably just going to use it over and over and over and over because it is what it is, because it is the R34 GTR. But I'm actually really curious to see where this car is going to sit probably three, four, five months down the road because you never know. I have a feeling that it's either going to go one of two ways. It's either going to remain a very highly used car or it's going to end up getting sort of moved on from and people will primarily use other cars. So I'm not sure. I'm definitely curious though to see where this car ends up in the grand scheme of things. Also, I'm sure a lot of y'all are probably going to ask, why in the hell is it so low? And the ride height of this thing kind of came from that original tune. And I've been playing around with it a little bit to see how far away from that like ultra slammed ride height I can get um, without losing any performance. Although I know that the... I know that that ride height obviously is helping me to a degree. It's helping this car to a degree. Although I don't know if it's aesthetically how I want this car to sit and how I want it to look because it's entirely slammed. I'm honestly also not entirely sold on the enormous um, swan neck wing. And normally I like wings like that a lot. Although I kind of find myself in an odd position with this thing because the wing is so tall and it ends up being so much taller than the roof of the car that I almost start to wonder if it's like not totally working with the design of the car aesthetically, but I threw it on here to run it a little bit to see kind of, I don't know, like whether I liked it or not. And honestly, I'm still back and forth on that. However, on the flip side of that, y'all can let me know in the comments down below how you feel about some of the enormous wings that you can get on some of the new imports in this game. So I don't know, I'm definitely back and forth on them, but I would love to hear y'all's feedback. Now, looking for races for whatever reason was, I don't know, it was a little bit difficult actually because I was trying to stay in the import category and I wanted to run a bunch of races with this Evo. And then I think we both ran into some connection issues because they literally pieced out so fast. And it wasn't even like we ran a couple of races and then they disconnected. They literally like, they did their burnout, they got ready. And then when it came time to actually race, they were just like, nope. And honestly, what's even more odd about it in my mind is, okay, so I red lighted, I made a mistake and they left. So I don't know if they were like very specific on, okay, yeah, you had one chance to get this right and you red lighted. So you're not going to get the, you're not going to have the privilege of racing me. And to be honest, I entirely, I don't know, I doubt that it was that. I doubt that it was anything even remotely close to that because if it was, that would be pretty ridiculous, honestly. Now the Civic, the Civic was actually really, really quick. And I think racing the Civic honestly showed me a lot of areas where this thing was struggling. So if we can kind of get a little bit more familiar with where this car struggles in particular, we can probably get a little bit closer to 
the right dial in of the tune. So once we've got that tune dialed where we want it, then we should be able to get this car kind of up to the level of some of the other cars in my garage from especially prior to the update. Because I've seen some people running in that 5.5 five and 5.6 range, although those are kind of few and far between, and a lot of people are running these cars a little bit closer to the 5.7s, 5.8s. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are claiming to be running 5.5s five and 5.6s five all the time. And I find that that always happens with this game. Like if you end up running or, you know, I don't know, like you go online and you find a lot of people that are running five nines, five eights, and then you'll post your build online. Let's say a build that's running, I don't know, like five eights or five sevens occasionally. And you'll get absolutely swarmed by people that are like, oh, I run five fives constantly. I eat five seven cars for breakfast. I'm like, Okay, so then why don't I see the 5.5 five cars like constantly online? But honestly, at the same time, I feel like that's just honestly probably one of the realities of a game like this, because when you have a game like this that's entirely based on getting a tune dialed in, the second someone runs like a really good time, like once, they are so like they will hold on to that specific time and they'll tell you that they run it every time. Now, at this point in the video, we are going to walk through the specifics of the tune. Now, again, I do not claim this tune. I do not claim the tune as a starting point. I did not develop this tune from the ground. Um, if you do want to check out the tune itself, it will be linked in the description box down below, the original tune. Although I have done a couple of little tweaks and changes here and there. Although I didn't, honestly, I didn't feel bad about changing things up with the tune because it was publicly available. It was just out there. So I decided to just base my very first, I don't know, my very first initial setup off of it and then use it as a little bit of a launching pad to try to design a couple more elements. So with that in mind, you can use it if you want. Although I definitely recommend figuring out what works for you personally. And of course, before we finish up, I do want to kind of mess around with a little bit of the visuals because honestly, the visual side of this game is something I don't really think I spend enough time in. Um, I think it's something that I almost ignored for the longest time. And then when I started messing around with the design editor in Offered Outlaws, then I kind of came back over to No Limit and I was like, wow, there's a lot more you can do with this than I thought. And if you are willing to spend a little bit of extra time in the editor, um, there's a lot that you can come up with. And there's a lot that not only that you can come up with, but there's a lot of designs that honestly, I didn't even expect to be able to figure some of these out because a lot of these designs are, they're a lot more, when I say a lot of these designs, quote unquote, I mean designs from, I don't know, maybe a car that you've seen in another game or a car that you've seen in a movie or something like that that you want to recreate. Maybe not on necessarily a one-to-one -one replica scale, but, you know, kind of on a basic scale or as close as you can personally get. And this design editor will actually get you a lot further than I think a lot of people give it credit for because while someone that comes from, I don't know, a game with a much bigger following might see this design editor as, I don't know, like basic or rudimentary, I think that it's a lot more powerful than a lot of people tend to give it credit for. But of course, with all of that being said, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the first iteration of our R34 Skyline drag car build. Now in the future, obviously this car is going to go through honestly a lot of other um, kind of designs and tunes and iterations and this, that, and the other. I have a lot of work planned for this car later on down the road. Although let me know in the comments down below which car you would like to see on the channel next. And with all of that being said, enjoy the rest of this design and I will see y'all next time. Also, you know I had to go ahead and get that 97 li uh, license plate in there. I don't know. It had been so long since I had done a proper license plate and please do not think that this is like some sort of hyper realistic license plate because it's not it's one I just kind of whipped up in no time at all so it looks uh very rudimentary but nevertheless I did enjoy putting it together so with all of that being said once again 
let me know in the comments what cars you would like to see on the channel next, and I will see y'all later.